In this video, we're going to continue our look at UV mapping. We're going to pick up where we left off, where we're laying out the UVs for our crow model. So far, we've laid the UVs out for the crow's left wing, and we're going to continue by now laying the UVs out for the crow's leg. So to begin, I'll select the faces that I want to project. And we're just going to grab all of those right in there. And as we look at this, we want to identify the shape of our selection. And we want to match that with a projection type. So if we look here, we have somewhat of a cylindrical selection. If I go to Create UVs, I'll see that I have a cylindrical mapping type. So we'll go ahead and choose this and project those UVs. Now the cylindrical mapping method gives me a projection manipulator. And I can select this and actually move it around and affect the way that the UVs are being projected. Let's take a look in the UV texture editor at what we've got so far. So I'll just go in and zoom out and we can see that our current UVs are really just a mess. They're kind of all over the place and looks like we've got some flipped, some overlapping, they're just kind of everywhere. But instead of undoing, I'll go back to that projection manipulator and try to translate, rotate, and scale it just so that it shifts and fits my selection a little bit better. So let's go back to my perspective view and we'll take a look here. All of these squares that are surrounding my manipulator allow me to rescale the manipulator itself. Now down in the lower left corner of my manipulator, we have a red T. Now I'll orbit around here so we can see that a little bit better. And it's this little T right over here that we want to focus in on. If we click on this T, it's going to change that cylindrical manipulator and return us to the more common universal manipulator that allows me to scale, rotate, and translate. What I want to do here is orient that cylindrical projection so that it fits my leg or fits my projection better. To get to the rotation, I'll click on the blue circle. That brings up my rotate manipulator, and we'll just rotate this in the X, and we'll kind of pull that back. And now I can also watch what's happening over here in the UV texture editor as it will update for us automatically. Let's switch our viewports here. I'll just change my viewport configuration so that I have my perspective view in one, and I'll change the second one to my UV texture editor. And let's open that viewport up. And now when I make changes here, I can see what's actually happening in my UV texture editor. I'm gonna translate this manipulator back, and there we go, we can start to see the leg come back together a bit. Let's translate that down, and we'll also then rotate to see if we can get a little bit better there in the Y direction, and it did open up. Let's try just a little bit further, and now it's going back together. So right there looks pretty good. And by rotating it there in the Y, we're actually moving the seam of the UV texture, or the UV layout. So by rotating it, this right here, this border edge, is going to continually shift and switch back over to the other side. So by rotating it, we can get a much better mapping method, or we can see if we need to redo the projection. But in this case, our map turned out to be pretty good by moving that seam around to the other side. I think that'll work. And now I'll go full screen here with the UV Texture Editor and I'm going to select the UV shell, and we'll move that off into empty space. I'll choose UV, my component marking menu, and then I could go up and I have an extra tool here that is specifically designed to move entire UV shells. I'll choose this, and then when I click anywhere within a UV shell, it'll highlight the entire shell. So this kind of saves me a step. I don't need to always go select, select shell. We can use this tool here to manipulate the entire UV shell. 
and I don't have to worry about missing any of my UVs. Every time I grab, it'll move the whole shell. So I have this laid out. My next step will be to unfold. I'll use my smooth tool, and then we'll click on unfold and drag to the right. And there we go. And again, that scale kind of really jumped up there, but I really don't care about the scale at this point. I'm just going to hit W and just translate this off to the side over here. And we can really see that the leg that I just projected is five to ten times larger than the wing. We know that that is proportionately not correct, but again, we really don't care. And the reason being is that we actually have a tool that we'll be able to use when we lay out all of my UVs that will get everything back into the proper proportion. So we can leave it large and just move on. Let's go back to our perspective view here and let's do the toe. We'll do his back toe and I'll again select those faces and I'll frame them up. And once again, we're, we're pretty much getting a cylindrical shape right there. And I'll select everything here, but I will not select the end of his toe, okay? That face that's capping the toe off. I don't want to choose that. If I had that in my projection, the cylindrical map would keep the cylinder capped. And that face sitting right here at the end would then keep all of those other edges together. And therefore, my cylinder would just kind of stay in this box shape and just crunch down on top of itself. And it wouldn't be able to be pulled apart. So it would kind of be annoying. I mean, we could go in, we could cut UVs and, and eventually get it apart, but it's just much easier to leave that little face off, do a cylindrical projection, and then we'll come back later and reproject the end toe. So with that selected, we'll choose Create UVs, Cylindrical Mapping. And we can see when we do that cylindrical map, the orientation of the manipulator is way off. It's off by 90 degrees there. So I'm going to grab that T that sits off to the side of the manipulator and use my rotation tool just to rotate that up. Now I can manually rotate it, but I can also see over here those numbers moving. So I could just click in that space, type in 90 in order to straighten that out. And at the same time, we can see in our UV texture editor, that the toe laid out really nice for us. And we'll just slide that over there. And now let's finish that off. Let's grab the end face. And obviously a cylindrical map is not going to work for this. Remember, we want to match our selection to our projection, or vice versa, match the projection to the selection. So I'll choose Create UVs, and we'll do a planar map. And I'm going to open the tool options before we apply it. And to do the planar map here, I want to look to see what axis that I should be projecting in. And we'll just go to a side view there. And this face is going to need to be projected in the Z axis. We can see that that axis going right along there with my model. So I'll choose Z. And we'll choose Project. That will throw out the projection manipulator. That lines up perfectly with that face, mainly because it's a square. So it's a pretty easy projection for us to do. And we'll look down there in the UV texture editor and we can see that we get a decent projection. It is faced the wrong way. So we'll just go ahead and flip that just again so we get it to be blue. And let's go to UV and we'll grab that at W. Let's go full screen. Now, we could do the unfold tool on this, even though it's a simple face. It's probably not going to do anything. I think we're already really, really close to the original shape, but it's not going to hurt either to uh, just hit the unfold on there. You can see it just changed it just slightly. And again, I'm going to go back to W to get out of the smooth tool, and then I'll go to edge. And what I want to do now is take this face and sew that back to the toe. I could not project all of this at once. By doing two separate projections, I get decent UVs, and then we can go back and use Move and Sew in order to put different UV shells together. To see where this is going to end up going, I'll choose Edges, and we'll just go straight to Edge, and I'll select an edge, and that shows me its corresponding edge. That's going to be the edge that I will be allowed to sew it to. We cannot just grab any random edge and sew it anywhere. 
it has to go back to an edge that it truly is connected to in the first place. And we probably sew it to any one of these here. I think we'll sew it back to this one. And let's just check on our model. That's the top one, our top edge. So let's go ahead and sew it to that. It just kind of seems to make the most sense. And we'll choose Move and Sew. Now, I do have a shortcut right here for Move and Sew, that kind of hotkey icon. Or we can go to Polygons and choose Move and Sew Edges through the Polygons menu. And we'll just hit that there. And that's going to sew it up. Now, both of these objects were not in the same proportion. So we can see that they've expanded where the two edges met. Not really what we want. That's going to give us distortion in our texture. And we'll get some distortion on either side there. And of course, we'll have some stretching in the middle. But this is easy enough to fix. We'll just go to UV. I'll select the entire UV shell and do Unfold. And that also is going to clean up the toe because we did not do an unfold on that earlier. So now with the two pieces sewn together, we do an unfold and we get a nice looking UV shell there.